Our last problem here in our section on uh, stoichiometry has to do with calculating percent yield. So just kind of a little side note on thinking about what percent yield is. Again, anytime you hear the word percent, you want to think part over whole. So in this case, percent yield is going to be equal to our actual yield divided by our theoretical yield and times 100. So the part is how much did you actually make? The whole is how much could have you made, could you have made, and then multiplying by 100 to get that to a percent. So the actual yield is something that you're going to get in the lab. That's a quantity that's measured. And they actually give us that value. They tell us that we make 51.4 kilograms of our silicon carbide. So now the theoretical yield is really a stoichiometry reaction. I'm sorry, a stoichiometry calculation. So all of a sudden this problem becomes just like the problems that we've done before. We have to take information in a problem and translate names into chemical formulas. Those chemical formulas into a balanced chemical reaction and then do stoichiometry calculations. So since those are skills that we've kind of practiced in earlier problems, I'm going to kind of move forward sort of quickly to get to our stoichiometry calculation. So silicon carbide is made by reacting sand, which is silicon dioxide. So we've got SiO2 solid. Okay, we react it with powdered carbon. So we've got carbon as a solid. We're going to make silicon carbide, which is SiC solid, and then carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide as a gas. Again, we need to balance this chemical equation. Okay, we can see that we've got two oxygens over here, so I'm going to put a two in front of my carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, excuse me. And we can see that we've got two carbons here plus another carbon that's part of the silicon carbide, so that gives us a three here. So now we have a balanced chemical equation to answer the question. So that they tell us that we have a processing of 100 kilograms of sand. Remember the sand is silicon dioxide. So we have 100 kilograms of this. And they tell us that we make 51.4 kilograms of this. So the question is, is this 100%? Did we make as much as we theoretically could have? So what we really need to do is we need to do one of our stoichiometry calculations. We need to take this and we need to convert it to moles using our molar mass. We need to change who we're talking about using our balanced chemical equation. And then we need to use a molecular weight again to get here. So again, this is our actual. We need to know how much is our theoretical. And that will give us again our denominator that we have here. So again, our walk is pretty straightforward, not unlike a walk we've not done before, okay? But we'll write it out here, and again, I'll map out below where we get our unit conversions to make sure that everybody is clear with that. So we start with 100 kilograms of our silicon dioxide. Since our molecular weights come with units of grams per mole, we need to first get this into units of grams. So we're gonna have one kilogram is 1,000 grams. All right, and I'm going to write down below here that this is one of those prefix unit conversions that you need to know. Now we're ready to go to moles. So we've got 60.09 grams of SiO2 and one mole of SiO2. Again, that's from a molar mass or molecular weight. We're going to change who we're talking about here. So we're going to have one mole of SiO2 makes one mole of silicon carbide. Again, this is from our balanced chemical equation. You'll notice mathematically this doesn't matter, but I want you to keep in the habit of doing this part of our unit conversions because it'll make sure that you don't make a mistake if it is a time when it matters. So remember, um, anything that we have in unit conversions will have um, a value, a unit, and an identifier, who we're talking about. Okay. Now we're ready to go to a mass, so we're going to have one mole of silicon carbide is 40.10 grams of silicon carbide. And since we're talking about theoretical and actual yields, 
uh, again, we want to have units of kilograms, the same as our actual yield. So we're going to go back to kilograms, so 1,000 grams is one kilogram. So again, this is a molar mass, and this is another prefix conversion. Okay, convince yourself that units cancel, kilograms cancel, grams cancel, moles of SiO2, moles of silicon carbide, grams of silicon carbide, grams will cancel, and we're left with kilograms, which is the units that we want. Now, if you want, mathematically, you can see that this 100 will also, or this, I'm sorry, this 1,000 will also cancel. Uh, that ensures that you make sure you don't put one of them in in your calculation and not the other one. At the end of the day, our calculation gives us 66.73 kilograms of silicon carbide. Now again, often this is going to be less than, uh, I'm sorry, this is going to be a number that's greater than your actual yield. So remember, this is our theoretical yield. Often this is greater than your actual yield because you're never going to be able to get you know, the ideal 100%. You're going to lose some material somewhere. Don't be scared, though, if this is something that's a little bit larger. There's experimental reasons that can cause you to have more than your theoretical yield. But in general, your actual yield tends to be a lower value than your theoretical yield. So again, theoretical yields should be larger than your actual yield. So all we need to do to finish off this problem now is to calculate our percent yield. So our percent yield is going to be our actual which was our 51.4 kilograms, divided by our theoretical, 66.73 kilograms, and we multiply this by 100 to get it to a percent, and we end up with 77%. You'll notice that since this is a ratio of two units that again have the same, or two uh, quantities that have the same units, our answer is unitless. Percents are unitless. Again, but this we sometimes refer to as a mass percent because we used masses to get that value. But it was important that these two values had the same units so that this ratio was authentic.